Hello, everybody. In this video, we're going to learn about dictionaries. All right, let's get going. So even in this day and age, you're probably familiar with an old fashioned dictionary. And when you open it up, it looks something like this. Dictionary works because you have words and you have definitions. And how are they connected? Well, you look up the word to get the definition. Again, you look up the word to get the definition. So Python has implemented dictionaries. And dictionaries are data type. You've learned about data types before, ints, floats, strings, booleans. Dictionaries are another data type where you have something that you look up and then you have some value associated with that lookup. So in the example right here, I might be looking up player two and the score for player two might be nine. Lists and dictionaries are related in that they are plural. So when you think of ints, floats, strings, and booleans, those are all singular. Lists and dictionaries have the potential to be plural or have multiple items associated with each one. All right, so here is how we do dictionary syntax. To make an empty dictionary, I did the dictionary equals and the squiggly brackets. So it's different from the lists, which are square brackets. The dictionary is a squiggly bracket. For dictionaries that are already populated, it's dictionary equals the squiggly brackets, key one, colon, value one. And then if I want more than one key value pair, I separate it with a comma, and then I can have a key two, colon, value two. If I want to access a value from a dictionary, and I know the dictionary, and I know the key, I do this, dictionary, bracket, the square brackets this time, and the key. And the whole thing together is the value. So in this example here, this prints the value of the dictionary dictionary for the key precious. There is another way to do this with dictionary methods, but I've found that that's a little bit harder for new folks, so I'll show that later. So moving on to adding items into the dictionary, if I want to add something into the dictionary, the syntax is dictionary bracket, the new key equals to the new value. If my dictionary looks like this before with one original key and one original value, it'll look like this afterwards with the original key and the original value still there, but a new key and a new value also. If I want to update the value of a key, it's pretty similar. I go dictionary, the square brackets, the key, the key that I want to update, the equals, and then the new value. So before, if it looks like this with the original key and the original value, after it will look like this with the original key, but the new value. All right, so you might be wondering, why is it that we need to learn about dictionaries? Well, here's an example that shows why that might be. So I might have a program where I'm making a game. I have names, and each of those names has a score. So to do this, I'll need two lists, one for the names and one for the scores. And I'll have an index. And from that, I can get the name and the score of that particular name. When I use a dictionary, instead of getting the scores through an index, I can use a lookup of the name to get the score. And so this is almost like having a labeled list. I'm labeling the data in my dictionary. In most cases, especially as you get to a lot of items, this is going to be easier to keep track of. The other reason has to do with speed. So I got this info from towardsdatascience.com. I'm looking up items in a list versus looking up items in a dictionary. And in their test, for a 100-item list, dictionary is around six times faster. And for 10 million items, it's like 600,000 times faster. So dictionaries are faster. So here's the summary of why you use dictionaries. For one, it helps you label data, and that makes things easier to keep track of. And the second thing is that it's faster. The speed is much greater when using a dictionary compared to a list. OK, to start off, I'm going to make a blank string, blank list, and blank dictionary. This is just a review. The list is square brackets. The dictionary is squiggly brackets. I can show that this is true, and when I run it, it says it's a dictionary. I can print out the dictionary, and there you see an empty dictionary, the two squigglies which show it's the dictionary. OK, I can create a dictionary with items in it instead of making a blank dictionary. So I'll call this one dict, the squiggly brackets. So dict equals squiggly brackets. I need the key, the colon, and the value. And I can print this out. And there you have it, the squiggly brackets which show it's a dictionary, the key, colon, value. I can do the same thing, but this time I'm going to use a variable. So I'll set name is equal to Dr. Wu, and my dictionary will be, oh, I don't know, name and job. Overwriting my old dictionary, I'm going to print that out. And here's that last printout. The key is Dr. Wu, and the value is teacher. So here it shows that I'm able to use a variable if I want. Here I used a variable for the key. I could also use it for the value. OK, so now I'm going to access items from this dictionary. The way I do that is dictionary bracket key. So I'll print that out. Dictionary, which is dict, bracket. And this is the square brackets this time, not the squiggly brackets. The key. My key is Dr. Wu. 
and I'm going to show two at the same time. I can do it with a hard-coded string of Dr. Wu. I could also have this be a variable, which I'll use later in the lab. But in both cases, it prints out the value, which is teacher. OK, so now I will add an item to my dictionary. So the way I do that is dictionary bracket key is equal to the value. So here we go. Dictionary is dictionary. Square brackets and the key, make vial a swamp, is equal to teacher. And when I print this out, here it is. I have my dictionary with the old key, Dr. Wu, and the old value teacher, as well as the new key, which is Viola Swamp, paired with a new value of teacher. And what this shows you is the values don't need to be unique, meaning that you can have the same value for multiple keys in that dictionary. Let's say Dr. Wu gets a new job. So the way I do that is I go dictionary bracket key is equal to the new value. So dict bracket key, the key is Dr. Wu again, and maybe a retired teacher. And when I print this out, you'll see it change. And Dr. Wu's value changed from teacher to retired teacher. This shows, by the way, that each key is unique. If I try to add in another Dr. Wu, it doesn't let me do that. It only lets me change the one that's already there. All right, common mistakes. The most common mistake that people make when they're just, just starting out is to confuse squigglies with square brackets. So if I make this dictionary, it's got to be a squiggly. This dictionary keeps track of how many oranges I have. So when I'm making the dictionary, it's got to be a squiggly bracket. If it's a square bracket, it gives me a syntax error. So again, making the dictionary, squiggly bracket. But accessing the dictionary, that's a square bracket. So here I'm accessing the dictionary and printing the value for the orange key, and it prints out five. If I make these squigglies, I get a syntax error. So again, making a dictionary, squigglies. Accessing a dictionary, square brackets. Finally, the last mistake that people make at this stage is to not understand the difference between the dictionaries and the lists. So the lists you'll use when you have order. You want to preserve the order. Dictionaries, you're not preserving order, meaning that this foods underscore dict bracket zero is not orange. It doesn't exist. Foods underscore dict zero will try to get the value for a key of zero, which again, doesn't exist. So you don't want to think of dictionaries as something with order in them. That's lists. Dictionaries you should think of as no order. So there is no dictionary bracket zero, bracket one, bracket two, so on and so forth. There is no concept of like a first item in a dictionary as there is with a list. You should pause the video and try these labs out yourself. But in case you don't know how to do something, here are the solutions. All right, creating dictionaries one. This one wants to create an empty dictionary called full names. So, so it's dictionary name is equal and it's the squiggly brackets. Squiggly brackets to make a dictionary. And I messed that up a little bit. It's full names, and there you go, that's correct. Okay, the next one, creating dictionaries two. Here we are going to make a dictionary that's populated. So I'm going to make a dictionary called grocery dict. So dictionary name equals, and we're going to again have the squiggly brackets, and it wants us to have these key value pairs in order. So let's try it out. Apple, colon one, and then a comma. So here's the key, grapefruit. That key's value, which is two, and then a comma, which separates it. And then the key three, which is pair. The value, which is five. And now because there's no more key value pairs, we don't need another comma. So I'll run that, and that's good. Then it wants to print out this dictionary. And there we go. All right, the next one. Accessing dictionaries. So the way we're going to access a dictionary is dictionary bracket key. So this is different from the other ones. When we make the dictionary, we're using the squiggly brackets. When we're accessing the dictionary, we're using the square brackets. So it wants me to print out the value associated with the grapefruit key. So print the dictionary is fruits, brackets, square brackets, and the key. The key is grapefruit. In quotation marks, in quotation marks. Because it's the string grapefruit, the hard-coded string grapefruit, not the variable grapefruit. So we'll try that out. And there you go, that's correct. Again, dictionary, bracket, key. That's how we access the value. Adding. So we're going to add something new to a dictionary. Here is our dictionary to start. It's got apple, grapefruit, and pear. And I want to add cherries to that. So. The way I do that is dictionary bracket key. So dictionary, oops, dictionary bracket. And then the key, the key is cherry. Again, the hard-coded string cherry. 
not the variable cherry, which has no value. But the hard-coded string cherry and the value is 14. So again, dictionary bracket key equals to the value. Let's run that, and that's good. So now it wants me to print out this value. So when I do that is I go dictionary bracket key. This is a review of what you did before, like one or two labs ago. Prints out, oh, there's a mistake. Fruits dict. Let's try that again. And there you go. It prints out to 14, and this one is good. Now we'll do updating dictionaries. In this one, I want to change the value associated with a key apple. Right now, it's 1, and we're going to change it to 999. So the way I do that, dictionary, again, the square brackets, key, dictionary bracket key, which is apple, is equal to 999. And I think that it wants me to print this out, so fruit sticks. And let's try this. And there we go. That looks good. So the last one we're going to look at is a debugging one, debugging dictionaries. I'm going to run this, and it's going to crash. And the error it's giving me is that it's a syntax error. It's pointing to where this error is. And the trick for this one is you want to remember, when you're making a dictionary, when you're creating a dictionary, it's the squiggly brackets. When you're accessing, adding, or changing something, that's the square brackets. So I'm going to change this to square brackets. And when I run that, it's an error. It says grapefruit is not defined. So I fixed something because the syntax error is gone, but something is still wrong. Grapefruit is not defined. So the error here is that grapefruit is a variable that stands for nothing right now. And that's not right. This is a common oops that people make. What I want is the grapefruit to be the string grapefruit, the hard-coded string grapefruit. And when I run that, it gives me the value for grapefruit, which is 2. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.